Um, so, you know, on YouTube, part of the job description is to try and post about things that you don't always care about. It's like, I used Ubuntu so you don't have to, and it happens quite often actually. But sometimes you give a spin on something you would never try if it wasn't for YouTube, only to get freaking surprised. Perhaps I can never see myself using YouTube outside of a web browser, but I can see how Pipeline could be super useful if we want to skip ads or avoid tracking. And of course, if we want some better integration with our device, especially if that's a phone. But all reasons you may want or not want to use it aside, what a fucking great app that is anyway. As you guessed already, even if you didn't know the app, Pipeline basically is for GNOME what Librecube is for Android. So. The first thing you want to deal with is the piped instances, okay? Here, we have already two instances, but you can look for a mirror that might work better for you. If you don't know, Piped uses community-sponsored servers for streaming from YouTube, and since everything is open source, you can also deploy your very own reverse proxy. It's not even that hard, actually. Anyway, for now I'll just grab this one. Already using it on Android, I'll put it here. Save it and then we can move it on top. And even if it fails, the app will use the APIs below. A few more things to set up here is your downloading app. For example, the YouTube DLP. Although the Flatpak can't spawn it, and I haven't looked yet how to fix it, we can select an external player, for example, MPV, which is useful if we want to have something like picture-in-picture -picture mode. I'll show you that in a bit. Our subscriptions are currently empty. Let's add one or two. Also, we can import subscriptions from Newpipe or YouTube after exporting them from Google Takeout. That search is fast, isn't it? Almost identical to web browser requests. Now we can subscribe to a channel and logically we can see it in our feed. Here, um, needs refresh? Yeah. So that's our feed and here is our subscriptions. It's very convenient actually if we want to use this app only to follow a few channels. Okay, let's try to watch something. That's the main goal, I believe. There are some problems, let me show you. Video starts fast and meanwhile, that's the clapper player. One very basic problem is the low resolution when the videos start playing. For instance, that's 480p. After a few seconds, it will switch to a better quality. And I believe there is an issue open on GitLab to force resolution, but for now, that's a quite annoying thing. It happens to Android YouTube too, to be honest. One more thing there is an open issue for is the comments. Obviously we won't be able to post, but we should at least see the comments that many times are useful on tech videos. Another handy feature is that we can bookmark videos so we can watch them later. And obviously we can also download them locally to watch. The download won't work as already told you, but yet one more nice thing on this app are the error messages. Can you tell me a GNOME app that has a more neat error UI? <laughs> I don't think so. And you know what else is neat? The picture-in-picture -picture mode? Actually, there isn't one, but we can work it out. First, we need to open the video on the external player, which in this case is MPV. Okay, that takes a bit. Mm, maybe it takes two bits. Yep, back in business. So now we can scale down the player. Uh, about there. Yeah, eventually, I'll decide. Okay, here, and then we can set it always on top, so basically we have picture-in-picture. Picture. Um, I don't know what else. Add one more channel, maybe? Okay, let's do this. And anyway, the point I'd like to make is that people perhaps could use this app only for watching their very favorite videos, without annoying ads ruining the plot. Then again, Nick has like five minutes ads inside, but you get my point, don't you? In every actuality though, the real point of this app is for the people that have a GNOME phone, rather is an app people will use on desktop. Big shame that GNOME apps don't work on Android. And by the way, I imagine the screen rotates, doesn't it? All right, time to check on code because some weird things are happening here. For start, that's pipeline repository on GitLab, it has active development and obviously is written in Rust because all the cool things are written in Rust. There is also the pipeline backend, which is basically a Rust library for piped. And I didn't check much, but perhaps that's the only piped API in Rust? Anyway, let's go back for a sec to show you something weird. Remember when I told you that pipeline uses the clapper player for playing videos? Well, not exactly. 
Uh, on cargo file, you'll see that Pipeline uses a crate called Clapper R's. So what's that? If you don't know, Clapper is a GStreamer player on GTK4 that's basically written in C. And, and there is a different project from a different developer that has auto-generated Rust bindings, both for the Clapper library and Clapper GTK, which is basically the UI. And those are the bindings that Pipeline uses. Strange, huh? Okay, time for an official me score, because I'm getting addicted on those. <laughs> um, Pipeline is one from these rare apps that I can't even find something to complain about. Something I don't like, and what about this freaking awesome error box? 92 easily here. Graphics are typical Adweta style. The embedded player is nice. I also like the input boxes with the inline apply buttons. Nice job overall. Features are limited by the piped SDK, but we have no ads, no tracking, no age restrictions, and an embedded player. Comments are to come, but what misses the most is logins. Which reminds me, yet another app that could benefit greatly if we had single GNOME SSO logins. My biggest complaint on using this app is that videos start on low res, although they switch to HD after a few seconds. Another problem is that we can't copy the text on YouTube descriptions. You know, there are such sort of issues, but they are all open to get fixed bugs. Oh man, the development is simply insane. Only the fact that Pipeline also provides a crate for the piped SDK is enough. The only bad is that there isn't a large community involvement. I hope that will change in the future, but in general, no maps don't attract many contributors, to be cynical. And so, the final me score is a 90, which places Pipeline on the top of GNOME apps. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Hot looks, up this my gun got a street fighter business.